So you start with one robot, and there's basically a bunch of different minds. And for the minds, we're basically given some kind of array that describes how long these minds take to, to uh, track down and destroy. So, you know, you can have minds of kind of, kind of like different values. Um, what was the example I used in my uh, write-up again? Was it uh, 10? Nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah. So, so for example, here is the example used in a problem statement. So, basically, let's say you have four minds to disarm, and they're, they, they have these. This is the time it takes to, to locate and destroy each one. And you start with a single robot. And the idea is, like, you know, you need, every, every time you send a robot to destroy a mine, it blows up the robot. So uh, you can't, for example, just send the first robot to blow up a mine because then you get into a bad state where you can never complete the problem, right? You know, if you send your first robot to blow up this mine, then the problem is that uh, you will not be able to do anything uh, with the remaining mines. Uh, so your robot can also build other robots. Uh, so basically, with, after, for this many units of time, you can duplicate your robot. Uh, so like one robot can become two. And, every, and, and the robots that are so created can in turn create other robots given enough time. Uh, and so basically the core essence of this question is to kind of like decide on the plan for how you're going to eliminate all the mines in the shortest amount of time. So for example, for this one, the optimal strategy would be like at time equals zero, we have one robot. So at, we, at time equals zero, we tell this robot to build another robot. Now we have two robots at time t equals three. And then at time t equals three, we send one of the robots out to destroy this mine of nine. And so at time equals 12, the nine mine is gone at time equals 12. You know, 3 is when we send out the robot, and it takes 9 units of time. So at time equals 12, the 9 mine is gone. Uh, meanwhile, the remaining robot, so this is one robot, what one robot does, the remaining robot builds uh, another robot, and so, and so at time equals 6, you have, you have two robots again. And then here, we you know, just tell the robots each to build more robots. And so at time equals 9, we have four robots. And then, uh, and then at time equals 9, we tell the remaining robots to go and destroy the remaining mines. And these complete at time equals 11. These are the three mines. And so in the end, what we get is that at time equals 11, uh, the three mines are destroyed, and at time equals 12, the nine mine is destroyed. And overall, the completion time, the overall completion time is 12. And that's actually the minimum that's possible for this case. The, uh, it, here, it's very easy to see that you can't possibly do better than 12, because after all, like, the only way you could do better than 12 is not build any robots. Because you have to destroy the nine mine, which takes at least nine units of time. And you do have to build robots initially. There's no choice initially. Uh, so here, uh, 12 is definitely the best possible completion time. Now, for a lot of other problems, uh, it may be like, you know, hard to see. Like, it may not be so easy to see for a lot of other examples, like when you should build and when you should destroy. Because, uh, like, think about it this way, right? You might have initially looked at the problem, and you might have initially thought, that you should just clone robots until you have enough robots to take care of everything and then take care of it, right? But the problem is, like, that doesn't even work in this example. Right? Let's say we, well, let's say what we do is we first create four robots because we have four minds. <coughs> then we only have the four robots at time equals six, and then the nine mine get, uh, gets activated only at time equals six, and then, you know, it takes 15 total units of time. And that would not be the optimal solution. So you can see what kind of like the tension in this problem is. Like usually in, in any problem that you know must be solved using the network programming, there's some kind of tension between you know uh, some kind of uh, well. For example, in the last problem, we saw that there was a there was a, essentially like a tension between like on one hand you want to distribute uh, your uh, color choices uh, for the image uniformly, but on the other hand, you want to focus more on the areas that have higher density.
So there's kind of this contrast between two like conflicting goals, and through dynamic programming, we can find like the globally optimal solution that balances it. Uh, so here we have the kind of the same situation. Uh, on one hand, we want to like we want to spend early, a lot of time early on cloning robots because it's kind of exponential growth, right? Uh, because you know, first you have one robot, but then after you clone, you have two. And if you clone again, if you don't use any of those robots uh, to destroy mines just yet, you get four robots, and then you can get eight and sixteen. So there's kind of this like exponential explosion of robots, and so uh, the kind of corollary of that is that. Because the growth is exponential, it means that taking out any robots out of that pool early on costs you big time, right? If you only have like two robots when you take one of them out, that's a factor of two fewer robots that you're going to have later. Uh, so kind of taking out robots early really hurts you, but at the same time, it can allow you to get started on some mine that takes a really long time to destroy. And that's kind of what happened in this example. We took out a robot early. Uh, we didn't wait for until we had enough robots for all of the mines, just because this mine has such a long working time that we wanted to get started on it as early as possible. If you just wait until you have enough robots, some of the really long duration mines, they might not, you know, you might not get started on them until later, and that might be a problem. So there's kind of this tension about like you really want to get started on these long running tasks early. On the other hand, uh, you don't want to take out robots too early. So that there's kind of like this tension and we need like some kind of uh, globally optimal solution that takes all of these choices into account and finds like the globally optimal solution for this. Uh, so um, how do we formulate this? Well, first of all, it seems like, okay, so in our solution we're going to need to capture some kind of history. Um, now one obvious kind of history is like which mines have we destroyed so far. It seems like any solution that like you know, takes our current state and asks, you know, between where we are currently in solving this problem and the final state that all the mines are destroyed and we're done, uh, what information do we need to know to reach that conclusion of like, what is the minimum time in which we can do this? Uh, that, that's, you know, usually how you want to go about formulating dynamic programming. Like, if I'm somewhere in the solution, I'm in the middle of solving the problem, what do I need to know about my current state in order to find out what is the optimal solution to get to the finish? Uh, and at first, it seems like the obvious history is like, you need to know the status of each and every mine, right? You basically need to know like which mines have been already dispatched and which ones have not been. Uh, it, it seems like you would need to know that because otherwise, you, you know, how can you, how can you know what the best solution is? Uh, how can you say like, which mines you're going to send robots to destroy if you don't know like which mines have been exploded thus far? Except the only problem is, if you actually do that, if you actually capture a full history of all the mines, uh, then that's like exponential time complexity, right? Because you will have to have like a set that captures like, like basically for each mine, you will have to pass around, you know, information like this. Like, which mines have, are dead and which mines are still alive. So, uh, that would be exponential time complexity because there could be, uh, you know, if, if this array is of size n, there, like, there can be two to the nth power different subsets. So if one of your arguments to this like function, if one of the state you pass around is uh, the subset of mines that is still alive, there are two to the nth power distinct possible subsets. So that leads us to kind of think that like, okay, maybe we need to find something better here. And one, and so th this is an example of like where dynamic programming meets a little bit of kind of like greedy algorithm reasoning. So we can actually reason, we can actually substantially simplify this problem by reasoning that uh, we can actually prove that it's always best to take the longest running mind first. And that is incredibly valuable because if we can prove that, like what it actually means is that, like in other words, any solution that is optimal by necessity, or at least any solution uh, any so let's put it this way, any solution that takes mines out of order of their running time is potentially suboptimal. Uh, or there, for, for every solution uh, that takes mines out of order, there exists some solution that takes mines in order of their running times longest first, such that that solution is at least as good. So basically, when looking for optimal solutions, we can just restrict our search to always taking the mines in order of their running times, uh, descending, 
we take the longest running ones first. And that makes sense, right? You don't want to take the short ones. You want to, the, if you get started on anything early, it's got to be like these long running tasks. So intuitively it kind of makes sense, but we have to like prove that it actually works. Like we have to prove that any solution, uh, and, and the way to prove something like this is basically you kind of suppose a hypothetical solution that doesn't fulfill this condition. So suppose a hypothetical solution where two minds are taken out of order. Like, you know, the, the, in a, out of order would mean the, uh, there is a mind with a shorter running time is taken like at a time that is strictly before a time when a mind with a longer running time is taken. So we will suppose such a hypothetical solution exists and we will show that it can be converted to some other solution that has an equally good or better time where the constraint is respected. So let's, so, so let's do that, just so we can see that this greedy strategy idea definitely works. But, what is the, but before we even go into that, uh, what is the whole point of even the greedy strategy idea, that you could always take the largest line first? Well, it really cuts down on our dynamic programming state, right? Because essentially, if we don't have to keep track of every subset of minds, if we know that we're always taking them in a certain order, all we, the only history information we need is the index of how many minds we've destroyed so far. Like, if, if, if we know that this is always going to be visited in this order, we can just keep, like, an eye of, like, what is our next mind that we have not yet detonated, right? We don't actually need to, like, keep a subset of all the different minds and all of their statuses. We can just always assume that we, because we take them and always take them in a certain order, we can capture everything there is to know about it just by just by uh, uh, keeping an index to it. So we would reduce like the two to the nth power different states of minds to just n different states of the minds. And that is extremely powerful. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's kind of prove that this greedy strategy works. So we need to basically first uh, kind of suppose a situation where it's not true, and the goal will just be to show that we can like substitute it with another solution for which it is true. And that will be enough, because th then that will imply that simply by considering all the scenarios where it is true, you have covered like everything. You have covered everything that can possibly be optimal. Uh, so, so basically, okay, well, let's assume we have this situation. Let's assume that there's some t time one and some time two. Time two is later than time one. And let's suppose at time one, I make the decision to defuse some mine that has running time, well, that has like a destruction time called like D1. So D1 is like the destruction time of this mine. So basically the constraint is like T2 is greater than T1. This is the time in which we start destroying the mine. And then um, the duration of destroying each mine is like D1 and D2. So, let, so let's say that you know, at time one, I start destroying a mine that doesn't fulfill the constraint. Like, in, other, in other words, it's a shorter mine. Like the duration of one is uh, less than the duration of two. So suppose I start doing this. So at time one, I destroy a mine that has less duration of D1. And let's say you know, this takes until over here, which is at time T1 plus D1. It doesn't matter how, you know, this is ordered relative to T2. Um, so, you know, this mine, it takes D1 time to destroy and it gets you here. Now, at time two, I start destroying some other mine. So this is just like, you know, like look at any solution to the problem. Like imagine you computed the solution to the problem and you're looking at just like some solution. And let's say, and what I'm saying is, let's say the solution contains two mines that are destroyed out of order, right? Uh, out of this order that we think we that we think is the optimal order. So take like suppose there is a solution that has two minds that are destroyed out of order. Any two, it may have more than two. Just take some two. Uh, so let so uh, and now look at them. Let's say one is destroyed at t one, and uh, has duration has duration d one. So it ends at t one plus d d one, right? And then another one you start destroying it at t two, uh, and it's done being destroyed at T2 plus D2. So <clears throat> D2 
Yeah, so, so and, and also we have that basically D2 is greater than D1, and T2 is greater than T1. Uh, you, like basically this is just uh, an example so chosen. So like this is an example where at a, at a later time, we start destroying a mine that takes longer, rather than doing it the other way around, where at the earlier time, we destroy the mine that takes longer. So what is like the overall time that these two mines will take to destroy? It will be this one, right? Because both, both T, T2 greater than T1 and D2 greater than D1, that implies that T2 plus D2 is greater than this. Okay, so in this case, the solution will be T2 plus D2, or it'll actually be the max of whatever else, and by whatever else I mean, you know, this is only two mines that we're looking at in the overall solution, right? This is only two mines that we're looking at in the overall solution, so the overall solution could be dominated by some other factor anyway. But, so, but the overall solution to the problem will be max of whatever else, and it's T2 plus D2 time. Now, let's look at what happens if we just, like, this is kind of like a copy and paste argument, what I call it. So, like, we, we will take the same solution and we will just change this one thing about them. We will kind of copy and paste this over here, and this will move down here. So, we will basically just make the decision the other way around. When we would have started working on this mine, we will instead start working on this mine, and vice versa. That doesn't affect the validity of the solution at all, right? Because because here we used up one robot at a certain point in time, and here we used up one robot at a certain point in time, and we will just exchange them, so there will be like no difference in the robot count at any given point. Oh, so, because a robot is kind of out of the count as soon as it starts demining, you don't get it back later. So uh, basically you can kind of exchange these. So what happens after you exchange? Well, so this one will be T1 plus D2, uh, we will now defuse the D2 mine at T1. So this one will be T1 plus D2, and this one will be uh, T2 plus D1. And the thing is, uh, we, we can see that this value that we said is going to go here, like this value is necessarily greater than both of these, right? Like T2 plus D2, uh, well this is T2 plus D1, but D2 is greater than D1. So we can see that this is a bigger value than either of these. So, 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 what, so, so to this like modified version of the problem, what is the overall solution? It is max of well, okay, whatever else you have in the problem. It is T1 plus D2 and T2 plus D1. Without knowing more about these, you can't know which one is greater. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So there's two cases, right? Either this running time is dominated by this, or it's dominated by this. If it's dominated by, if it's dominated by this factor, then, then the, either one of these are lower than this. If this one is even greater, then, you know, so basically, the or, like, if this one is the biggest one, then comes this one, and then come all of these. So in that case, the solution just doesn't change. The solution will just be dominated by this factor anyway. So in that case, uh, it doesn't matter which order you do them, and you can feel free to exchange them and put them in that proper in, in that order of descending order if you want, and it just doesn't change the solution. So in this case, it's not that it's not that the, this solution was suboptimal; it's just that this one is equally optimal. If if the running time basically wasn't dominated by the, these two lines anyway, then then that makes sense, right? Like if the running time wasn't dominated in any way by these two lines anyway, then of course you can exchange them; it doesn't matter. Um, but, but let's say the running time is actually dominated by this, right? So, so that actually means that this was worse than this, right? And so now that actually implies that all three things in this max are better than this. Like if this is better than this, then this is better than this, and these two things are also better than this. So uh, that actually implies that you've improved your solution by making that exchange which uh, contradicts the original premise that, that this was optimal. So, so essentially, um, it means that if you have any solution where the mines are taken out of order, the solution is either preserved or improved by putting the mines in order, which means we can safely assume that any optimal solution will have the mines in order. 
So, uh, I mean, you know, intuitively this makes a lot of sense, but like, you do have to like prove like and give like the specific reason why it really works. Uh, otherwise, you're just kind of like guessing, right? You're kind of saying, okay, this seems intuitive to me, but like maybe it's not correct, you know. And you know, tell you what, like, a lot of the time, like, if something seems intuitive to you, but like upon like really considering it, you can't really give a good argument for why it's true. There's a good chance it's because it isn't. Uh, at least I find that to be the case. Like, sometimes when I really think why something is true and I try to prove it and I can't prove it, I mean, obviously it doesn't like for sure mean anything, but a lot of the time it's because whatever you're considering is actually like not true. Uh, I mean, it depends what it is, but, you know, like a lot of people when they feel something is intuitively true to them, they think like, okay, 99% of the time it's going to be true, but no, it's like 50% of the time. Uh, so, you know, beware of assumption, simplifying assumptions that you can't prove to be correct. Okay, so now we've established that we can take the minds in a particular order. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to write our recurrence, more or less. So, what are the essential elements of history here? Like, what is the history you need to know in this problem in order to uh, solve it? Well, you need to know, like, what is the index that you're on, right? And what other piece of history do we need? Like, we need to know, like, how many more minds we have to get on. What else? How many robots? Huh? How many robots? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you need it. So, okay, so, so here we go. So we can write this equation, f of i and r. That seems like logical parameters to this. And what this is going to represent is if I, if I have, you know, uh, if I'm at index i and I have r robots left, uh, what is basically the time it'll take me from this point forward? Like, not considering any previous stuff I dispatched, uh, or any minds that may still be even be like in progress as I'm cloning these robots, just kind of like with the, like if I started the problem fresh with this number of robots and only having to deal with minds past index i, this is how long it would take me. Because what happens in other branches will be counted like elsewhere. Uh, so, so, so let's see how this works. I might be honest. Okay, yeah, I'm just checking the battery on that. Uh, yeah, so, all right, so, so what, what do we need to do here? Well, uh, so if right now we're at index i and we have our robots, well, there's different ways to kind of frame the choice. And some, some uh, ways of framing it are kind of better than others in terms of their time complexity. But to me, uh, like first I'm going to show the like, less optimal idea that I think is kind of like, to me was more intuitive at first, but then I found like the other method, which will have a better time complexity. So the first uh, idea is like, I can just think of like, how many robots do I want to spend right now? And that number can basically be anything between uh, zero, which means I clone all of my robots and I don't spend any, uh, and it can be up to r minus 1, because I have to leave at least a robot. We'll make it like a base case that if you have enough robots, you just instantly finish. Like, or not instantly, but with whatever time is left on this mine. So basically, uh, you know, the, 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 the mine at AI represents the longest running mine, and if you have enough robots to complete the rest of the array, you will just start all of them immediately. Uh, and that means that uh, whatever running the running time of AI is actually the greatest element of them all, and that will be your time. So basically the answer is just A of I if you have enough robots. But if you don't have enough robots, then you can take some number between 0 and R minus 1. Make sense? Uh, so uh, I just wrote it like this. So basically I want to minimize the time, so I'm going to do a min over a bunch of different decisions. Each number of robots is a different decision, 0, 1, 2, how many do I want to use? Uh, so min over, uh, and then i from 0, from zero to um, r minus 1, can use all of them. That way, I mean, I could make it so that you could use all of them and then deal with the base cases differently, but then you'd have to put in some kind of base case for what happens if you're trapped and you, you, know, you have zero robots but you still have mines. Uh, so, you know, you could include R here, maybe if you write the right base cases, but I just prefer to do it like this. You know, you don't let it get into that illegal state where the problem cannot be solved. Okay. So min over zero to I minus one. Okay, and what is in this min? 
Well, first of all, um, if we, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, 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 what is in this name? Well, first of all, you have to consider like this is the total time that will be taken. So, whatever robots you don't use here are ones that will be cloned. Uh, okay, so what is the time taken? But, uh, and those robots that will be cloned are the ones that will have to complete the remainder of the problem. Okay, so how long will that take? Well, it'll take you, it, it, it will uh, take you uh, t units of time, right? It will take you t units of time to do the cloning. Um, and how many robots, will, what, what state will you be in at that point? Well, um, depending on how many robots you took, like if you took i robots to work on mines, or sorry, I shouldn't use the same index here, let's use, uh, like the, this i is a parameter, so let's use some other thing, k. So if I used k robots currently to work on the mines, right, so this is like i plus k. Right? So if I took zero robots, I will still be back at i. I haven't made any progress on my minds. If I use like two robots, I will be at i plus two because i, I and i plus one will be destroyed by the current batch. Um, and how many robots will I have? Well, this one is like I have to subtract from my total robots uh, this k of how many I'm using, and then I double it. Right? Because each robot will build another one. So this is the, this is the state I will be in. After, you know, uh, after these robots do their job, I will be in this state. I, I will be, have advanced K on my minds, and I will have this many robots, and it will be this much time later. So it will be like this time first has to elapse, and only then do I get started on this state. Because the robots have to clone, right? Like the robots clone, and then I'm in this state. Uh, this is the job left for those robots. But, but, but this isn't all, right? This is for the robots that are cloned. The running time will actually be the greater of the running time of the robots that are cloned and have to solve the, remaining of the, the remainder of the problem, and the robots that have not been cloned and that are just out there destroying mines, right? Uh, so, so actually, we, like, this is a, the, the loop is a min, but there will be a max in here. Does that make sense? Like, the reason it's a max is because there's like two different things running at the same time. There, there are the robots that are out there destroying the mines out of the ones that you picked. And there are the, and, and there are the robots that have to solve the remainder of the problem. Yep. Sorry? Uh huh. What change are you proposing? Yeah. You're saying 2R minus K instead of 2R minus K. Ah, uh, no, no, no. It's, it's, actually, it's actually this. Uh, because be, be, because the ro you don't get to clone the robots if you use the model. So like K is the number of robots that are used in this stage. So you have R robots, and you pick some number of K of them to use, right? Because you pick to use K of them, you advance this by K. But those robots are out destroying mines, so they're not cloned. So the number of robots available for cloning is R minus K. And however many robots are available for cloning, they each produce one additional one, and they, they stay alive themselves. So you double that amount. So for example, if you had R robots and you used R minus one of them, you would actually only have two robots left. Because you would have one left, and then you would clone it, which would double it. Uh, so, so it's a max of this. Oh, or sorry, yeah. This is this is this expression. Um, I'll put it this way. Uh, max of this. Th so, so basically, these are like uh, robots cloned. These are like the cloned robot running times. And then you have to consider what about the robots that are currently out there destroying mines. Uh, so for them, what is actually the running time? Well, here's the, there's a special case, right? If there's zero, then there's no running time for them. But otherwise, the running time is, is A of I. 
if there's at least one robot destroying the mine, the running time, like no matter how many robots it is, the running time will be dominated by A of I, right? Because you will in parallel be destroying like A of I, A of I plus one, A of I plus two, etc., up to however many you have. But remember, A of I is the largest of all of those. So it is the longest job because we are processing them in order. Like basically we will begin by sorting this array. So because we are processing them in order, the uh, running time is dominated by this AI term. Uh, so, so here we will basically put some condition, like, you know, just like a ternary condition. I is, is K zero, is K zero. If so, then zero, otherwise A of I. Not A of K, A of I. I is the current index, so like if we're destroying at least one, like you see what's happening, like if we destroy at least one, like let's say we destroy some interval of them, like let's say these are like so, if we destroy some stretch of them, these all get destroyed in parallel, so the, the only time that matters is the one of this like greatest element, which is the first element in our range, so it's A of I. Like you could say that it, like technically this is like, I mean, technically, you should see this as like max of a of i, a of i plus one, dot dot dot, a of i plus k. But since this array is in order, we know that all of these are smaller anyway, and we can get rid of this max. And we can just write it like so. It turns out we can even get rid of this check. Like, it's okay to kind of think that something will take, it's okay to kind of insert this dummy weight of AI even if nothing is getting destroyed, but that's just because, uh, you know, if you think about it, like if nothing is getting destroyed, that means the robots are being cloned, and the cloned robots will start this weight anyway. So there's, like by inserting this weight here, it doesn't really change anything. But it, to keep it like conceptually clean, I insert this check. It's kind of like a, it, it turns out it, does, it can never affect the answer if you skip this check and then you just put AI here. But that's just kind of a hack. Like it just, you, you kind of have to see like why that is according to the structure of the problem that that doesn't change anything. Uh, but conceptually, like the logic should be this. Because there's no weight if you're not destroying anything. Yeah, and so this closes this max. And, and then you have to, like this closes its max, and then you have to iterate over all of the possible numbers of robots and uh, do this thing. And you know, base cases here are pretty simple, like basically, if the, the main base case is if you have enough robots, then just take A of I and return. It, it, uh, and there's not really like, yeah, there's not really like any other case that's necessary because like if, if you reach the end, you know, if i is like n or whatever, then the number of robots needed is zero, so then you return anyway. So, yeah, I mean, basically, it's if you're if you're ever at the n minus one element, it's it's kind of absolutely, you know, guaranteed that you have enough robots because we're always keeping at least one robot on hand. Okay. So, um, yeah, just to kind of like make sure there's clarity about what's going on here, like why, why is this like this? Is it, it's because, like, so you're in the state where you have, you know, you're at position, you know, you have R robots, right? And you're basically saying, I'm gonna keep some number K of them. Some number K of them are gonna be reserved for cloning, and the remainder, which is R minus K robots, are gonna be on mine duty. Or sorry, sorry, I had it the other way around here. Uh, some number k of robots are going to be on mine duty, and some number r minus k are going to be for cloning. So if you had r minus k for cloning, that means that you know t time later, you have uh, two r minus k robots, right? And that's where this comes from. And uh, this happens t time later, uh, and because here. K mines were taken care of by the other robot, you get to advance this by K. Uh, what about the robots destroying the mines? Well, essentially they're destroying like A of I, and they're destroying A of I minus plus one, et cetera, and all of this is happening in parallel, and so the like relevant running time here is the longest of these, and that is always AI. 
If there's at least one name destroyed, if there's nothing here, then it's nothing. Okay, so uh, th that's it. Uh, what is the time complexity of this approach if we were to solve it using dynamic programming? So like number of states, how many states? Uh, well, the, the, okay, we have to reason about this because like index, it's very clear. Okay, there's n states here. How many robots can we have? Well, if we have the base case that we always return as soon as we have you know, enough robots to complete the problem, then that means we actually never need to keep more than n robots. So this is also controlled by n. So, so now we basically have that the number of states is an order n squared. Okay, great. Number of states is order n squared. Uh, what is the number of, uh, what is like the time per state? So time per state here actually, uh, okay, order one, order one, order one, but then there's this loop, right? So time per state is actually order n. Yeah. Okay, so that means that the total time here will be n cubed. Yeah, so this is an n cubed algorithm. Make sense? Okay, so we can actually improve this to n squared by just kind of seeing the process a little bit differently. And, you know, the way I kind of saw this is I just kind of wrote out some of the, like what some of these expressions expand to, and I saw that many ex uh, expansions for like similar arguments expand to almost the same function calls. <coughs> like basically there's, it turns out that there's almost no difference. Like I'll leave that as an exercise to you to look at, but like, you know, if you look at what this expands to and what this expands to, these expand to almost identical terms. Uh, the, the only difference will be that uh, one of these will expand to, uh, one of these will have like an extra term in the expansion. So you actually could directly kind of relate this term to this term and solve it that way. But I propose like a more intuitive way of looking at it, which is that instead of kind of seeing it as like every step of the way, you're going to decide how many robots. Instead, think of it this way. Um, every, for every mine you go to, you're going to decide do you, want to, do you want to double all your remaining robots? So basically, we'll distill the choices to just two choices. Your choices at any given point in time will be, I want to double all my robots right now, or I want to get this next mine. If you get this next mine, you lose a robot. Uh, if you uh, decide to double your robots, you wait t units of time and you double your robots. So like essentially, uh, all of these more complicated decisions, like choosing to spend, you know, uh, k robots, that can be seen as a series of smaller decisions. You will go to one mine and you will be like, yes, I want to get this mine right now. You will, then you'll go to the next mine and you'll say yes right now. You will go to the next one and you'll say yes right now. So at every mine, you're only making one of two choices. Like, either yes, I want to get it right now, or no, before I get it, I will double my number of robots. Uh, so let's look at this now. This will avoid having a loop in the expression, and this will give us an order one time per state. So, uh, basically, I will do the better of two choices. Uh, the first choice is I will decline to uh, destroy this mine. If I decline to destroy it, then I will spend t units of time cloning my robots. I still have the same base case, that if I have enough robots, I just go for it. But uh, if I don't have enough robots, I, and I decide to double my robots right now, I will spend t units of time, I will stay on the same high, and I will double my robots. Alternatively, my second choice is I will, uh, I will get the current mine. If I do get the current mine, then I don't currently spend any time on cloning. Um, I will destroy the current mine, which advances my index, uh, because I will destroy the current mine, and I will lower my robot count by one. I have R robots, this is, here I'm not cloning them, I'm instead destroying one to get rid of the mine, and so I will get this I plus one, R minus one here. Uh, now I also still have to, and then I will have to solve the problem on the, this, these rema this remaining situation where I have covered one more mine, but I have one fewer robot. And additionally, I need to now pay, you know, the time for destroying the current mine, which is A of I. Uh, so how do I pay that? Well, it has to be the max of this and A of I, right? Because, uh, 
it's whichever of these tasks runs longer. It's whether like getting this runs longer or getting this mine runs longer. These these things will operate in parallel. So if I make the choice again, again to recap, if I make the choice to clone, this is cloning time. And then I will have to solve the problem with double the amount of robots, but starting from the same index. Or I am the better of doing that, and this other choice, which is that I will uh, I will destroy a mine, so this is destroy time. I will in parallel destroy a mine and think of what I want to do with my other robots. And now I have one fewer mine to destroy and one robot less. So I send one robot to destroy a mine, and in parallel I saw I do all the other things. And and that takes this amount of time. So this is like not clone, but this is like the destroy one solution. This is this is I just decide to destroy the next mine. This is the time to destroy it, and this is the remaining, you know, remaining. And because the destruction and like doing the remaining part of the problem here happens in parallel, I take the max. Here I did a sum because the cloning has to happen first, and only then this happens. Okay, so that's actually all uh, for this equation. Uh, so if you got this, uh, this is actually an n-squared solution because there, this equation is order one. This equation is order one per state, and you have n-squared states, and this gives you an n-squared. So you know, if uh, you know, if you solve this, uh, you know, even if you solve it with the n cube, you know, get, definitely give yourself a good pat on the back because that's you know a hard problem to begin with. Uh, but if you got this n-squared solution, you know, like very nicely done. Just to be clear, the time for this one was n squared? Yep. Yeah, n squared. Well, the number of states here is n squared. Uh, so depending on which formulation you did, if you did that initial formulation, it would have been order n per state, which amounts to n cubed time and n squared space. Uh, alternatively, if you did if you did uh, this formulation, this is a more optimized formulation, you still have n squared states, so still n squared space, but you will actually now solve it in n squared time as well, because you will spend only order one. 